So in this video, we're gonna go over how to make a footer for your website. So there's no exact way to do this that is, you know, universal. There's a million different designs for footers that you can use, but this is my personal favorite. It's really easy to build, really fast to build. You can make it as a template to use across different projects, but also it scales down really nicely and it allows you to fit as, as much information as you might need to fit into a footer for things that aren't maybe high enough priority to go into the navigation bar. You can put a lot of the stuff in this footer, including social media links, a company logo and a lot of other stuff so the way we're going to start is i'm running localhost right now you don't have to uh, we're only using html and css in this there's no javascript or php or backend languages whatsoever so you don't have to use localhost but i am and what i've got is just a blank html skeleton the same as always and i've included a style sheet which is just opening my css file and then style.css which is blank and i've also included fontawesome.min.css which is a um icon set uh, font awesome provides a lot of cool icons for social media and you can use them as a font as opposed to as an image so it lo loads a lot faster a, a lot higher quality uh, so i've included them, them as well and then inside there just a blank html skeleton inside the body tags there's nothing um so what we're going to do first is type out a the standard uh, markup so i'm going to do uh, div tag footer a lot of people will say why don't you use the footer tag it's just genuinely the way i've taught myself to do it there's no right or wrong way like i say you get the same result either way and then inside i'm going to do div class inner footer uh, it's nice to give things uh, decent names so that you know when you're referring back to the code later or if someone else has to read it they can read okay if footer and inner footer you can tell what the relationship is they share just by reading the names and then i'm going to do what i do at the start of all my videos uh, which is use the asterisk to give a, a sign up assign properties to every single thing on the page i want everything to like zero margin zero padding i want the list to have no style and text decoration to have none so that's applying to every single element that i can put on this page and, and I, this is because some elements in HTML will have default styling. Uh, so for example, the page will have a, a thin border around it by default and certain like H1, H1, H2 paragraph tags will have default padding and spacing. I wanna get rid of all this, I wanna make my own. So I'm gonna paste in the footer tag and then what I'm gonna do now is give it some style. So width is 100% of the viewport width and VW it allows the CSS to see the width of the entire page, the entire browser window. So if you're on a mobile, this is gonna scale down to that size. And if you're on a browser on a desktop, it's gonna scale up to be a lot bigger. Then I'm gonna set the display to block, overflow to hidden, because we're gonna be floating some elements inside it. And normally if you don't set it to the outermost element to overflow hidden, you're gonna have some issues with um, the document collapsing on itself. So next what I'm gonna do is give it some padding. So I wanna set the padding to 70 pixels on the top and bottom, zero on the left and right. Um, and this means that anything I place inside the footer is going to be 70 pixels away from the top, 70 pixels away from the bottom, which is a nice amount of space, and then zero pixels on the left and right. Uh, and now, because I've used padding, I also want to say um, box sizing border box, which means I, well, I've set my width to 100 of the viewport width. If I added padding to the left and right, I want it to be included in that 100%. I don't want it to add you know, 100% plus 70. I want it to be 100% including 70. And then I'm gonna give it a background color. And in this case, I'm gonna use 18181A, which is quite a nice color. And then we're good, now we're gonna style the inner footer. Um, so the way we're gonna do that is uh, display block margin zero auto, and then just give it a width of 110 pixels, which allows it to be centered, you know, quite nicely on the page and then a height of 100%. Um, so, so far, there's probably not going to be anything we can see on the page yet. We can see here, this is our 70 pixels margin, top and bottom. So now, what we can do is we can move back to our HTML and we can add some more HTML elements. So, inside the inner footer, I can create a div and give it a class of logo container. And then inside this, I'm going to put an image tag. The source of this is going to be slash footer because that's my project directory slash images slash and you can see here i'm referring to this logo logo.png images slash logo.png and then if i go back you can see a, a huge version of the logo for the company that i work for which is world merit which is an organization that gives opportunities to young people in different countries in the world uh, and now i'm going to go back in and style this so what i can do is i can say in a footer um dot logo container so anything with the class of logo container that's inside um, a, a class, a thing with a class called inner footer. And then I'm gonna set the width to 
because this is because I'm trying to section out the foot on the horizontal axis quite nicely. It'll make sense in a second. I'm gonna float it left, give it the height of 100% and display block. Now we can see that if I show it again, nothing's changed yet. And that's because I need to actually set the dimensions of the image. So if I copy this, paste it down here and then type IMG, which just refers back to this image tag inside here. Uh, what I can do is I can then say width 60% 60, 60 and then um, set the height to auto. So, you know, it matches, it basically will match the height of the, the width, sorry. Maybe make that a little bit bigger, make that 65. You can play around with this. Like I say, it's all completely subjective. It's just a matter of your own taste. Um, now we can go back to the logo container. So inside here, still, so we're still inside the inner footer, but we're not inside logo container. I'm going to make a div class of footer third. And this is because there's going to be three sections now with uh, that are in strips next to each other that contains information. So it'll make sense in a second. I'll give it a H1. And this is going to say need help question mark. This is going to be the title of this strip. So I'm going to add them now. I'm going to set the href to a link of just blank for now. Maybe give it the hash and then close it off. And then inside the A tag, I'm going to type terms and conditions. Uh, and then I can copy this down then for every single link that I want. So I might want, you know, privacy policy. Oops. And you can add as many as you want uh, into this as well. So now I'm going to copy the footer third into my style sheet. In a footer dot footer third. And now what we can do is set the width. And this is a weird one uh, because I've already done the math for this beforehand. Uh, I want each of these to be one third minus... Uh, with, sorry, a quarter minus 20 pixels in width. So if I make, because I have the logo container, then I have three footer thirds. That's four elements in total. Um, so I now want them to be, to fit in next to each other. So I've done the maths already. So it's 21 point, and then I can copy the number exactly over there. So I don't have to type that out and make an idiot of myself. And then minus 20 pixels, which is going to be the padding that's on the right hand side so that these things aren't completely touching each other. There's going to be spacing on the right. So I'll add that now, margin right, 10 pixels, float left and height 100%. And you just follow along with this. And then for the for this footer third, for the last one, I don't want it to have any padding on the right hand side because it's going to be touching uh, this right wall. So I don't want it to have a gap between the end of the element and the thing. I want it to be cleanly touching this line. So what I can do is I can say margin right zero on foot a third, but then make it the nth child, which is a pseudo selector. Um, actually, I can use last child, which makes more sense, uh, which has the last child of that's called foot a third. Um, make it have no margin on the right. So these calculations here are worked out so that by the time we're finished, the entire width will be 100% covered without any gaps. Uh, this will make more sense in a second, I think. So now if I copy in a footer, footer third, and then I do H1, which as we've seen over here is the title of our footer, um, I can say font family. In this case, I'll just use Arial maybe because I don't have any fonts loaded. Um, did you do that in? I never really used Arial. Uh, font size, 22 pixels. Uh, color white display block with 100% and margin bottom 20 pixels so we can look at this really quickly see what this looks like uh, see this is the title of our footer and then obviously we haven't styled these yet so they're right here and then now we're going to style the a tags so I can copy this down probably because uh, a lot of the elements uh, styling is going to be the same change that to a p tag uh, actually an a tag because the links and then, font, yeah, that's fine. Then I'm going to slightly lower the font size to about 18 pixels. Uh, make the font weight 200 pixels. And then um, I can set the I can set a padding bottom to 5 pixels um, instead of a margin. Because padding's clickable, margin isn't. So you can see here now they neatly form underneath this list. Uh, and the good thing is now is that I'm able to copy them across. I can take this entire foot a third, copy and paste it down. Do it again, paste it again, and then again. And then if you look now, we should see that it's completely all in line here. So now I can obviously change this sec second section to um, more. So any more information that you might want to have. Uh, so you could have like brush brochures. You can add donate because in this in particular instance, it's a charitable organization. You can have governance. So you can check out the people who are running a charity. 
uh, and you might do impact reports so you can see all of the reports of the cool stuff this charity is doing you can save that there and you can see it pushes the footer down the more elements you add it doesn't actually ruin it it just pushes it down further so if i add a lot more elements and i save it you can see that you can have as many or as few elements as you want so i'm going to get rid of these uh, and now this last section is going to have some uh, social links in so it's going to say followers and then um what i'm going to do is delete these for now and then put an li tag in it and then inside do an a tag with um with a href again of just blank and then close it off and then inside here i can type an i tag class close it off i is typically for italics but font awesome uses the i tag for styling so we give it a class of fa press space and then type fa hyphen and then facebook you can see if we go back to it there's a tiny little facebook logo this is because font awesome has already styled it for us uh, they're really really good um for that sort of thing so now I can copy this down, say Facebook, and I can do like Twitter and Instagram. And then you put, you, would, you would put the links to your Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram inside the hashtags here. So you type like HTTPS and then type the link in there. But obviously I'm not gonna do that. I can leave it blank. Uh, and then underneath here, inside still, I'm gonna do a span tag. And then inside that, I can copy and paste some information in about, uh, which is like an address in this case. I'm gonna copy that in. This is just some text about an address of an organization if anyone wants to check in. So now I can go to the CSS and we can style this together. So the next thing is if I copy down foot a third and instead of taking an A tag with me, I'll do LI, which you'll notice here is referring to this, which is wrapped inside our social media. Uh, the LI tag has a display of inline blocks. We want them to be next to each other as opposed to on top of each other. Padding zero on the top and bottom, five pixels on the left and right and font size 20 pixels. So we take a look at this. They're all quite nice and neatly next to each other and you see there that the text is uh, hasn't been styled yet for the um, address so we can do that now as well paste that in there and then instead of li we'll do span which is the address color white family aerial uh, you can change the font to whatever you want font size 16 pixels needs to be a little bit smaller than normal font weight 200 again this isn't really the focal point of the page it's pretty small the width is 100 percent display block and padding top 20 pixels so we take a look at this uh, it looks quite nice except for this little ruined character here i can remove uh, oh that's because of the copyright symbol hasn't been properly encoded so i can just remove that for now so that, instead of encoding it and let's save well, merit register charity da, 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 da. looks quite nice and then the next thing we can do is this is maybe what your footer would look like so i can obviously remove a couple of words here and there to make it look a little bit better um design wise quite nice looks really good this will obviously be at the bottom of the page on my screen it's at the very top of the page so it doesn't really make much sense where it is but there would typically be content above that and this will be pinned to the bottom of the page so what we can do now is we can actually scale it together i, I didn't want to leave that part out of the video the way we the way we style in uh, CSS is we type at media max width. So this is saying once the screen reach to, reaches this size, which is 450 in our case, which is about the size of most mobiles, uh, we want to do certain things. So when we get to 450 pixels, I'll actually make that 600 pixels because I don't know if Chrome actually goes this small on web. So this is but this is for mobile. Uh, we can say dot footer dot inner footer with 90 percent so instead of being 100 percent or, or 1100 pixels like we made it earlier we can set it to 90 percent and then if we go in a footer dot logo container which is obviously the thing that contains our logo and then do a comma and then say in a footer dot footer third which is the three thirds for our footer uh like these uh we want to say with 100 percent and then margin bottom 30 pixels and now scaling this should be that simple so this should be the code for the entire scaling of this so if we look at this now paste it in and then go smaller you can see now see once we've scaled uh, it all goes down neatly on top of each other um with that we're just with this much scaling code basically you can obviously like i say this is completely subjective you can change this as much as you want play about with it as much as you want uh, but this is what I think is the best way to code a footer for a website. So please leave a comment and let me know if you have a better way of doing it. This is a very was supposed to be a very quick and simple tutorial, but I have a habit of not being able to under explain things. So I tend to go the other way and over explain things. So also let me know in the comments if you think I need to make more long winded tutorials when I explain or if you don't really care about the why you only care about the how. 
I can definitely cut these videos down to be like four or five minutes. Leave a like and subscribe for the next video. And I hope to see you back here on the channel again for the next video.